Right, I've called this press conference to bring to light something I believe the public needs to know about my opponent, John Patterson. Mr. Patterson began taking his public school pension in 2012 when he retired from teaching and began campaigning full-time for state representative. In the fall of 2012, Mr. Patterson said that if he won the election, he would donate his step representative salary to the schools because he was already getting a pension. He did not say anything about donating to charitable organizations. He specifically mentioned the schools. Education schools and the kids were the backbone of his campaign two years ago. A few weeks ago, my campaign submitted a public records request to the K-12 schools in District 99 and found the following. Only one school district out of the eight in the district received any monetary donation from Mr. Patterson. Jefferson High School, where Mr. Patterson was a teacher, received a $500 donation in February of 2013 for their Model UN program. So while Mr. Patterson was drawing a public pension, he was also double dipping by collecting his public salary as a state representative. Over the first 21 months in office, he has collected over $100,000 in salary while donating only $500 to Jefferson's Model UN. He has put over $100,000 in his own pocket on a broken campaign promise. It's no wonder the public is cynical towards politicians. It is false campaign promises, like the one John Patterson made, that gives public servants like me a bad name. Elected officials should be held to a higher standard and need to be accountable to those who vote them into office. Do you really want to elect another phony politician whose primary interest is their own personal bank account and not their community? We need strong leadership to represent this district and someone who will do the right thing even when no one is looking. I will tell you that if I'm elected to the state representative position, I cannot afford to donate my salary as I have no pension to collect and must work to help support my family. However, I will also tell you that I won't make campaign promises that I can't or won't keep just to get elected and that I will work hard in my job as your state representative if you decide to hire me. When elected, I expect this district to hold me accountable and to also expect some positive results after two years of being in office. What I do promise is to not just collect a paycheck as your state representative, but to do my very best to make sure that we are no longer ignored in Columbus. Thank you. I've requested this time to respond to my opponent's attacks with respect to uh, my philanthropic activities. Philanthropy, by its very nature, is a very private matter. My wife and I have practiced the discipline of giving for years in our personal life, and we agreed to extend this to our public life. It is written that in terms of giving, the right hand should not know what the left hand is doing. We never intended, therefore, to share our gifts, lest it be viewed as seeking public praise. However, my opponent has chosen to make this a public issue, and as such, it now deserves a public answer, even though this was asked of me and answered in the Plain Dealer endorsement interview of September 29th. Two years ago, I pledged to support schools with the remainder of my salary after having met my living expenses. During the first month of office, I met with various superintendents and asked how I could help. They asked for state flags for their new buildings and to replace those which were worn. I paid for each of those flags and then received requests from townships, scouts, and other persons and organizations. Each flag was paid for from my state salary. There are now 48 Ohio or U.S. flags flying around the districts thanks to our efforts. And I might add, those do not appear on the balance sheet of a school. It's an in-kind contribution. However, my wife and I discussed the greater need for education than simply purchasing flags. We quickly realized that we needed to enlarge our sphere of giving to serve more people in more direct ways. And we have done just that. To share just a partial list, we have donated to education programs, to school levy campaigns, to scholarship funds, to the OSU Extension Agricultural Day and Geauga County Learn, 
as agricultural education is critically important. We've given to band and athletic boosters and direct community assistance programs such as GEO Ministries, Samaritan House, and Bridges to Discovery to assist those who have completed drug, alcohol treatment programs transition to independent living. And that is on the burner to be uh, hopefully completed in Chardon. To be sure, there are far more programs that have benefited from our charity, but I simply wanted to list a sampling. On top of this, we have specifically tithed my state salary to the Jefferson United Methodist Church Building Fund for the purpose of a new education wing. In all, we have given back over $27,000. Again, we share this not to seek public approval, but simply to respond to my opponent's inquiry. That being said, I will continue to address the real issues which face all of us, economic development, and our continued quest to make our district better for all. Thank you.